Hi, I'm Sarah Knotts, Director of the Brunswick County Board of Elections, and in this video I am going to go through the precinct evaluation summary packet um, and explain everything that's in it and hopefully answer any questions that you may have. So I'm going to jump right in here and share my screen. This summary um, is available on our website, which is www brunswickcountync.gov slash elections and right up top there's a link for the 2021 precinct study and that's where you'll find this information. Okay, I'm going to jump right in. Um, got the cover page. Immediately once you get into the meat of this document, if you're looking at it electronically, you will find a table of contents which is interactive, meaning if you see a section here that you want to look at, all you have to do is click on that and it will take you directly to the page that covers that section. So remember, if you're looking at this electronically, you can just click on any of these sections in the table of contents and it will jump you to that page. The first thing we discuss in this document is an interactive map, which we have available that allows you to put in your address and search for what changes might affect you. The search feature is in the upper right hand corner. You're going to enter your address, um, select what pops up, and then it's going to provide you an information panel that gives you your current voter precinct. So that's where you would um, participate in elections today if we make no changes and then your proposed voter precinct. So it's going to tell you if we make the change that's currently being proposed, what precinct would you be in? And so I encourage you to go look at that. I'm not going to go into the nuts and bolts of how this works because there is another video that um, I made today that will walk you through that. So just know that there's an interactive map that will allow you to see how these changes affect you. One of the things that we are considering is moving away from traditional precinct names. Um, this request has come up several times in the past few years where residents come to us and they want us to reconsider the name of their precinct. And when you get into that, it becomes a little more challenging than just changing a name because we have a lot of precincts that correspond to municipalities or areas of the county and if we start changing them, we have to make consideration for including everyone that's in that municipality or in that precinct. So say, for instance, we have a municipality of Leland in a precinct, but that precinct also has some residents of the municipality of Belleville. We wouldn't want to name that that precinct Leland or Belleville because then you're excluding the residents of the other precinct. So it really becomes quite challenging when we look at it from that perspective. Um, one of the things that we are considering is moving away from traditional names altogether. Um, this would be a shift from names like Precinct 01, which is Hood Creek, um, and changing it to a code corresponding to the section of the county that the precinct is in. So we have proposed breaking the county up into four sections, which you see in this map here. We've got a north section, a south section, a central section, and a west section. Each of these sections would have precincts within it named corresponding to the section. So precincts in the north section would be named NB for North Brunswick with a number. So Hood Creek is this first precinct right over here. It's currently precinct one called Hood Creek. We would simply change that to NB01 for North Brunswick 01. It would be the first precinct in the north section of Brunswick County. Um, and that goes all the way down for each of the other sections. And on page three, you can see a table which outlines current precinct names with the proposed new name. And I want to emphasize that when we, from an election administration standpoint, are providing customer service to voters, we spend more time referring to a polling place then we do a precinct. So let's say a voter calls and they give us their address and they want to know where they should go vote. We are not telling them they're in the Hood Creek precinct or they're in precinct 01. We are telling them that if they go vote on election day, they would go to the Sandy Creek Town Hall. So moving away from these traditional names, 
might help streamline customer service to voters and making sure voters focus on the polling place, which is the location that if they vote on election day, they should be going to. So please review these names. Um, if you have any thoughts about moving away from names or suggestions for other names instead of moving to the alphanumeric code, please provide those in the survey. Um, we are reading that, that feedback and the board will consider that before making any changes. Um, then we break it down and we show you a proposed map of each section. So this would be the North Brunswick section and it shows the names here along with their section of that same table. Then we've got the South Brunswick section, Central Brunswick and West Brunswick. And I want to call your attention to each of these pages. They do have a clickable link here where you can actually download a PDF version of these maps in which you can zoom in. Um, so say you have trouble reading the map that's in the document, you can actually click that link and download a larger version. So just be mindful of that. Okay, moving beyond precinct names, um, we really came into this project with the intention of assessing precinct boundary lines and polling places. If we learned anything in the 2020 presidential election um, dealing with COVID, it's that it is so important that we have polling places that can um, really handle the influx of voters that would be moving through the facility in a large election. Um, we looked at our polling places and we had to take a lot of things into account like the ease of access to the polling place. Do members of the public, are they familiar with this location? Is it available? You know, if, if we're looking at a location, maybe has a function going on, it might not be something that's feasible for us to use. Use, excuse me. Um, we have to look at functionality items like parking, ADA compliance, the size of the location, the, the um, physical condition of the facility, anything like that we have to take into account. And so we did determine that there are some polling places that we should reconsider. And I'll talk about those as I go through. So this just gives you a summary of some of the things that we considered. And then I will now go through each precinct and talk about the specific changes. Um, first up is precinct one, which is Hood Creek. And if we shift to that alphanumeric naming scheme, it would become NB01. Um, in the last election, we moved that precinct to the All Souls Episcopal Church. It was larger facility and we needed that for social distancing purposes. Um, moving forward, we do recommend returning to Sandy Creek Town Hall, which we have used in the past with great success. Um, and that is the only change with the Hood Creek Precinct um, is returning back to the um, Sandy Creek Town Hall as a polling place. Coming to precinct two, um, we are recommending a change in boundaries. Um, what we've done here, this map shows in yellow the proposed new boundary for precinct two. And what we've done is you see the section here that was in precinct two that would be moved to precinct three. And there's a little section here that was in precinct three that we have moved to precinct two. And so we have made some small adjustments to this precinct. Um, prior to the 2020 general election, we um, held this held the voting place for this location at the Leland 5th District Community Building and it had some limited space and there were other activities going on in that building. We utilized Lincoln Elementary School in this last selection and it did turn out to be um, quite adequate for our purposes and so we are recommending that we stay at Lincoln Elementary School and then we adjust the line um, to accommodate these changes noted down here by the yellow line. Um, same thing with the pages where we were talking about the precinct names. These do have PDF maps that can be downloaded, um, which you can zoom in to see more of. So I'm able to zoom in really close to some of these to see where this line is. Okay, precinct three. Um, this precinct also is going to be seeing a change in boundaries. Um, precinct three votes at the Brunswick Center at Leland and we do recommend that we continue using that facility. 
Um, the boundary lines would be adjusted to move these voters from precinct two, which we looked at um, previously, but it would also take a portion of voters from precinct 4B down here and move them up into precinct three. Um, so that would be voters north of Highway 7476. Um, you can see again a blown up version of this map that has zoom capabilities by clicking that link. Okay, um, Belleville 1. This is one of the first precincts we're going to come to that has a very significant change. Um, Belleville 1 is a historically our largest precinct. You see currently they have um, over 11,000 registered voters. Um, they currently vote at Belleville Elementary School, which is an adequate facility. The challenge is the number of voters in that precinct. We really wanted to work to shift some voters elsewhere. And when we were looking at it, um, we determined that voters in the Brunswick Forest neighborhood, which are right here in this section of green that's now within the yellow boundary, um, voters in Brunswick Forest actually would have an easier time reaching the Leland Cultural Arts Center than they do Belleville Elementary. And so we are proposing taking voters in Brunswick Forest, and um, removing them from the Belleville 1 precinct, which votes at Belleville Elementary, and moving them into the Belleville 2 precinct, which votes at the Leland Cultural Arts Center. And so when we come to um, Belleville 2, you'll see those the same change in boundaries that we discussed um, when we looked at the other precincts. So we've got voters here that are currently in Belleville um, two that we would propose moving to Bel uh, Woodburn Precinct three, um, but then you've got this influx of voters surrounding Brunswick Forest right down here that would be pulled into the polling location of the Leland Cultural Arts Center. The Leland Cultural Arts Center can handle this number of voters. It is one of our largest facilities. It's got a wide open room that we're able to use. It's got plenty of parking and you'll see that their new number of registered voters is is still less than what um, Belleville one had before we make any changes. So that's our recommendation there. Precinct five Town Creek, we will have a slight change in boundaries and this has to do with voters right down here. Um, along the border being moved from precinct five up to um, precinct 04 B2 to vote at the Leland Cultural Arts Center. So this area right here in purple would come um, out of the Town Creek precinct and into the Belleville 2 precinct. So that is the proposed change there. Uh, we currently use the Town Creek Park Community Building. That is sufficient and we have no recommended changes to the polling place. Um, precinct six and seven, those have no recommended changes. So precinct six, we're currently at the cooperative extension um, at the government complex. Precinct seven, Southport one is currently at the Brunswick Center at Southport. There are no recommended changes to either of those. Precinct eight, um, which is Southport two, we are recommending a change in boundaries. One of the reasons is the facility that we use for that precinct um, needs to have fewer voters. It is a, a wonderful location, but there are limitations with the number of voters that it can service. So we are proposing some changes that would shift voters from that precinct into precinct 10B, which is Mosquito 2, and into Oak Island 1, which is precinct 9. So you'll see here the current precinct 8 is this tan color right here. And um, there's an area here to the left of this red line, which are part of the town of St. James, and they would be moved into the Mosquito 2 precinct along with the rest of St. James. And then here, uh, just below this yellow line, those voters from precinct eight um, are in the town of Oak Island. Um, they've been annexed in and um, they will be moved into the Oak Island one precinct to vote at the um, Ocean View United Methodist Church on the island. And a lot of this has become by request of residents of some of these areas. 
Um, so here we are at precinct nine showing this portion of precinct eight that is going to be moved into that precinct. Um, and and so we've already talked about that when we were talking about precinct eight, but these people right here would be moved into Oak Island one. Um, Mosquito one uh, precinct 10 a there are no recommended changes there. We um, have historically voted at Virginia Williamson Elementary and we plan to continue voting there. Um, Mosquito two, which is precinct 10 B. That is, um, which we already touched on, this area right here in tan to the left of the red line and to the north of the yellow line that will be moving into Precinct 10B. Those are residents of St. James that will move to the precinct that contains the rest of St. James. Um, precinct 11 and 12 have no changes. Um, we are happy with the polling places that we use there and the boundaries seem to be in good shape, so no changes there. Precinct 13 is where we get into another wholesale change. Um, the Shalote area historically has had a lot of precincts that come together and intersect right in the middle. And so it um, was very confusing for people to know where they should go vote. And I'm gonna open this other larger map up so that when I talk about it, I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so each of these colors, so you've got purple here, pink, another purple here, which is a slightly different hue that ends right there. I don't know if you can see that. And then this green here, those all sort of intersected right in this general area. And we really had a goal to provide a centralized precinct to most of the voters in the Shalot area. And so what we have done is, is we plan to and propose pulling in some voters from precinct 17 here, from um, precinct 15 here, the Grissett Town precinct, and from precinct 14, which is right here, this green color, and combining those with the current Shalote precinct to make that a more centralized and easily accessible place. And what that also means is we needed to find a more adequate polling place. Um, we have been voting at the Town of Shalote Fire Department, which um, there has been some road construction down there. It's not really easily accessible anymore from Main Street. And so what we propose doing is have voting for this precinct at West Brunswick High School. Most people in the area know where West Brunswick High School is. It's got a large open space to facilitate a larger number of voters, um, plenty of parking, and we think this would be a better fit for the voters in this area. So you'll see that um, the number of voters in this precinct is significantly going up, but we do believe that the high school has the capability to handle that influx. Um, one of the precincts there, this is just a more zoomed in, I guess you could say, image showing what we've removed from the frying pan precinct 14. Um, this section in green right here is proposed to be moved from the frying pan precinct into the Shalote precinct. Um, and we've got here some of the neighborhoods that that would include. Um, so Owenden Plantation, Briarwood, Pine Lake, Rourke, Wo Rourke Woods, and Rivers Edge. So those are some of those neighborhoods that would be affected. Precinct 15 is um, the Grissett Town Precinct, and traditionally that precinct voted at the National Guard Armory. Um, we are not able to use the National Guard Armory any longer. It's not a suitable facility. Um, so we really needed to back up and determine where the best location for the voters of this precinct would be. So we have um, shifted the boundary here. You see this area in purple right up here. Those voters would be shifted into the Shalote precinct to go vote at um, West Brunswick High School. And we have a new polling place available to us for the remainder of this precinct at Oceanhow Beach Town Hall. They've just opened a new facility and they are open to having us use that facility as a polling place. So we would recommend shifting that polling place to Ocean Beach, um, Oceanhow Beach Town Hall. 
Precinct 16, Shingle Tree 1, um, we are recommending a change in polling place and boundaries. Um, the polling place was temporarily moved in the last election to Jesse May Monroe. Um, simply due to social distancing requirements, we needed a larger facility. Um, we do want to adjust the lines to consolidate voters um, to the closest location. And so you can see here, these two colors are quite similar, but the existing line, current line is right down here. You can see there's two shades of pink. So that is where the boundary used to be for precinct 16. And we are recommending pulling um, a pretty significant chunk of voters from the precinct 16 shingle tree one um, and putting them into precinct 19 shingle tree two. Um, and so you'll see that new line there along that yellow. Precinct 17, this is a precinct that will see some changes, some of which are due to the consolidation of the Shalote area, which comes over here. But we have also identified that this precinct was really too large and we had a lot of voters that were driving past one polling place down, th down here in the southern end of the county to get to the polling place for this precinct over here. And so what we have um, recommended is that we come in and essentially split this precinct into the current precinct 17, and then we would create a brand new precinct over here. And we'll talk about that on a future slide or a future uh, page. We also recommend changing the polling place for this precinct. We have historically voted at the Grissett Town Longwood Fire and Rescue. And while that um, polling place is has been adequate and the Firefighters are always happy to see us come back. They're very friendly. We do think that it's necessary for us to find a polling place that has climate control and has more space. Um, so when we vote in fire stations, the challenge comes in when um, it's raining or when it's hot or when it's cold, that there's no air conditioning and no heat available. And the humidity can really cause a challenge with the paper that's being read into the scanners. It makes the paper swell. And so trying to move away from those sorts of locations has become something we wanted to try. Um, so again, this polling place would be moved to Union Elementary School and there, there would be um, a boundary change right down the middle here. Um, precinct 18, we recommend no changes to the Waccamaw Precinct to the boundary or the polling place. Precinct 19, and um, we talked about this when we looked at Shingle Tree 1. Um, the current boundary is here right along this um, line where we go from like a peach to an almost purpley pink. And we have shifted that line to incorporate more voters from the Shingle Tree 1 precinct to vote um, with the, the voters of the existing Precinct 19. Um, we would like to have Precinct 19 um, continue to vote at the Brunswick Center at Calabash. We used that facility in the 2020 presidential election and it was a great facility. It had parking, the um, voting enclosure was great. And so we would like to see the voters of um, Precinct 19 vote at the Brunswick Center at Calabash. This is our proposed new precinct that I touched on when we talked about precinct 17. Um, and I will open a larger version of this. Um, you'll see here the current precinct 17 is this very large pink area. So all around here. The proposed new precinct would be carved out here um, where this yellow line is. Um, so that would become a brand new precinct that we have not had before. And we would recommend that the voters of this new precinct vote at the Southwest Brunswick Branch Library, um, which is a facility we have used before. Um, and we would be shifting nearly 5,000 voters into that precinct. Um, we do list here some of the areas in the location that would be moved. Um, there's a list of neighborhoods here. Um, and so that's that's going to be a brand new precinct voting at Southwest Brunswick Branch Library. 
Um, the remaining precincts have no changes. So precinct 20, 21, 22, 23 have no changes to boundary and polling place. Um, again, all of these that we touched on, if we shift to the alphanumeric naming system, would have a new precinct name if we go in that direction. And so we have listed those in this packet. You'll see the proposed precinct name. Um, I hope that this was helpful. It may have been incredibly boring. I would ask that if you have any questions about what um, we talked about in this, that you please call the office and um, you can ask to speak to me. I'm Sarah Knotts. I'm the director um, here at the Board of Elections. You can call the office at 910-253-2620 or you can send us an email at elections at brunswickcountync.gov. I do want to make sure to touch on um, kind of the timeline of where we are at this point. We are accepting public comment um, until the 15th of April, which is a Thursday. We will cut off that comment period at 5 p.m. on April 15th. We will have a board meeting on Monday, April 19th. And during that meeting, um, the board will discuss this um, proposal in detail. They will talk about the precinct names. They will also take into account any public comments that were received. So we definitely encourage you to take a look at this proposal and provide any feedback that you have. Um, I hope this was helpful and um, thank you for watching. <laughs>